Hi there. It turns out there are few easy traps when it comes to using and connecting common USB testers like the UM25 or UM34 and clones which I reviewed earlier. In this video I'd like to address a few of these in the hope to avoid disappointment or possible damage to your equipment. To start us off, in this test setup you see the UM25 connected to a 5V supply while the two multimeters show the voltage and current of the power supply. As expected, the tester reads the voltage but shows zero current because there is no load connected to it. The power supply on the other hand shows that we draw about 18.5 milliamps. This is the current powering the tester itself. As you can see, I can turn the display off and the current drops to just below 10 milliamps and of course, when I turn it back on, it rises to the original value. The fact that USB testers draw some current from the source but don't tell you about it is true for the vast majority of USB testers out there. Here's my old Unity USB tester in the same setup. It draws just below 6 milliamps, much less than the UM25, but then it can do far less and only has a monochrome LCD. In general, the more capabilities the tester has, the more current it will draw. While the UNI-T will always draw 6 milliamps regardless, in some testers like the UM25 and 34, you can change the display brightness which changes the current. I usually leave mine at 2 which gives the 18.5 milliamp, but you can see how the current increases as I change the brightness setting to the maximum almost 28 milliamps and it drops to 13 or so at the lowest setting. So far we were using the tester without any load and it shows zero current. If I attach the white USB light, the current on the tester now shows that this light draws 224 milliamps and of course the power source has to supply the sum of the 224 milliamps and 18.5 milliamps that the tester itself uses, therefore we read almost 243 milliamps, which is indeed the sum of both. If you would use this setup to measure the capacity of a power bank, the tester accumulates milliamp hours and milliwatt hours, but those are all based on the 224 milliamps it measured as the current to the load. The power bank on the other hand is actually discharged with around 246 milliamps, 10% more than expected. In case you're wondering, this USB light draws actually a bit more current as it heats up, but the difference between the current on the tester and the multimeter is still almost exactly 18.5 milliamps. So my advice is to turn the display off for most of the time of the measurement, which halves the error. The other measure is to increase the load current. If your load draws 1 amp, the extra unaccounted 10 milliamps consumed by the tester with the display off are just 1% error. While manufacturers often don't mention the extra current used by their tester, the other telltale sign of such a tester is that it can't measure down to 0 volts. That's because its processor takes its operating voltage from the source and depending on the voltage regulator in the tester, it usually stops working at 3 volts and below. Here I am reducing the voltage and you see that around 3.8 volts the display goes dark. I'm dropping the voltage to just 3.0 volts. Going back up at 3.2, we can see the processor reboots but immediately turns its display back off. The voltage needs to rise back to above 4.1 volts before the display comes back. Note at 4.1 volts the display simply reappears, it wasn't a reboot. That happened earlier at 3.2 volts. I have to admit that until this video I wasn't aware that the UM25 had two minimum voltage levels one just for the display and the lower one for the processor itself. To confirm this, here's a second test. I drop the voltage and the display goes off as expected at 3.8 volts, but this time I stop at 3.5 volts. When I go back up again, the display simply reappears. No reboot screen of the processor. In other words, it kept running the whole time. 
Of course, other USB testers behave differently. The Unity, for example, works until just above 2 volts before its display is completely faded away. The key point is that all USB testers that use the source for power will not be able to measure down to 0 volts. For the simple Unity tester, it is quite clear there is not much you can do about its current draw and minimum voltage requirements. It has just one input and one output and that's it. Not so for the more advanced tester like the UM25. As you can see, it almost bristles with additional ports, one micro USB and two USB-C ports in this case. The micro USB and one of the USB-C ports is marked in, while the other USB-C port is marked out. There are so many gadgets out there sporting micro USB and USB-C ports for power, charging and communication, so it's quite natural to think that you could do the same here. Why not power the tester through the micro USB port while using the main input for measuring so it no longer steals current and voltage from the measuring source? It certainly looks as if that's possible. For example, the ZY1280 looks very similar and has the same limitations as the UM25 when you stand alone, but in addition it has an extra port allowing it to be connected to a PC to send its data and to get its power from there. Presumably that would mean it no longer takes it from the measurement source, but despite searching I have not been able to confirm it. I should point out that while this USB tester comes with way more functions than the UM25 and a truly crazy amount of digits, it has a $60 price tag to match and its voltage measurements are actually less accurate. More digits are easy to do in software but not always justified. Back to the more modest UM25, it doesn't have a PC X power port and the only way it can send its data is with the extra Bluetooth interface. That is, if you have the UM25C version. But the wiring of the extra ports on the UM25 aren't properly documented and can still hold a few surprises. Before we dive into this, I need to explain this little box you may have noticed earlier. It simply sports a USB-A plug on one side and a socket on the other, which are interconnected, except for the positive line where either end connects to a red banana socket while the ground also has two banana sockets but they are connected through. I added a label to show what I mean. This box is simple to make and very useful to test various USB devices and the break in the red power line allows measuring current easily. I am using the box to conveniently probe the UM25's input and added a little breakout connector to do the same on the other end of the micro USB cable. As you can see, we have continuity on the ground, which you might have expected. And continuity on the positive as well. This means the micro USB and the mains input are directly connected. Let's try the same on a USB-C port marked in. I don't have a short USB-C cable, so I'll call this one up to get all of it in short. And transfer the breakout connector to the other end. We have continuity between the mains input ground and the USB-C ground. And continuity between the mains positive and the USB-C positive, so the two are connected as well. And just to prove the pudding, let's check continuity between the micro USB and the USB-C. The positive line is connected and so is ground. 
For completeness, let's have a quick look at the second USB-C connector labeled out and test its continuity against the mains output socket. Grounds are connected. And so are the positive lines. To sum up, this overlay over the UM25 shows how the various ports are connected. I am ignoring the data lines here, of course. You have three choices for connecting the measurement input. Normal USB-A plug, micro USB or USB-C and two choices for the output, normal USB-A socket or USB-C. But as you can see, the inputs are connected to each other and so are the outputs. With that understanding, let's repeat powering the USB tester from the micro USB but have a multimeter connected to the mains USB input. As expected, we see the 5 volts coming through the micro USB reappear at the main USB input. And exactly the same happens when you use the USB-C input for powering the tester. This would not be very good if the main USB port would be connected to a power source instead of a multimeter, because now you have two power sources in parallel fighting each other and unless they are specifically designed for that, something is going to break or release the magic smoke. I am trying a less dangerous variant of this because there's only one power source feeding a scavenged PC front panel module with dual USB ports on the left. You can see that all testers have power. The yellow tester shows the current drawn by the blue one. What happens if we connect the micro USB port of the blue tester to power as well, in this case through the red tester? Will the universe as we know cease to exist? Not quite as dramatic. We can see that the current in the yellow tester has dropped by around 10 milliamps, and those 10 milliamps are now drawn through the red tester as its display shows. Because all the current comes from the same source anyway, all that happens is that the current is now split between two paths, the ratio depending on cable and connector resistances. Let's put a load on the blue tester and see what happens. Because tis the holiday season and my 50th video, I decided to use a festive string of 20 colored LEDs with 50 ohm resistor as load. This draws pretty much exactly 40 milliamps as you can see on the blue tester. The current splits as before. If you add the current on the yellow and red testers, you get 58.5 milliamps and that's exactly the 40 milliamps of the LEDs plus the 18 and a half milliamp power used by the blue tester for itself. Here's another interesting test that you might not have seen before. What do you think will happen when I disconnect the input power from the red tester? Did you predict that? It keeps going with no input. A miracle? Not quite. If you check the yellow tester you see it now shows 36 milliamps, so roughly twice the consumption of just the blue tester by itself. What happens is that we backfeed the red tester through the micro USB cable. Before I remove the power to the red tester, the red tester was feeding power into the blue tester through the micro USB. Now the current flow is reversed. But because we connect to the in on the blue tester, the current never reaches its measurement system and therefore it doesn't show on the blue tester display. Why can you backfeed a USB tester through its output? This diagram from my review of the UM25 can help. You see here the principal schematics of the measurement circuitry. Normally the processor taps its input voltage to get the 3.3 volts. But if you backfeed, all that happens is that there is now a very low 10 milliohm resistor in the ground connection. That does not hinder the regulator to produce 3.3 volts for the processor. But of course, the whole current sense electronics now has to deal with negative current because the direction is reversed. Let's continue the festive theme by powering the string of LEDs from the input of the tester. As expected, they light up and the yellow tester shows the additional current. The red tester shows no current, 
So apparently the processor can't deal with negative current flowing in reverse from output to input. I reckon that this operation may not be too healthy for the tester, especially for larger currents. And speaking of outputs, let's quickly verify that the output ports are indeed parallel. I'm powering the festive lights from the USB-C output and the tester shows the expected 41 or so milliamps. If I connect the USB light stick we used at the beginning that drew around 225 milliamps to the main output, you see that both lights are on and the current is the sum of both. For the last test I want to show another possible problem and potential for magic smoke. If you connect something via the micro USB that can only handle 5 volts, you could be in for a surprise if you use the main input and output for something that's capable to negotiate higher voltages. In this case, I'm using a Xiaomi power bank, the silver item partially covered by the multimeter, and a mobile phone as a load. The micro USB has the festive lights and the multimeter connected. Initially everything is fine, roughly 5 volts, and the lights are on. Connect the phone and it negotiates a higher voltage and causes the power bank to switch to almost 9 volts. The lights go on overdrive, but they can handle a short overload. But imagine you had something else on that port that's not so tolerant. And that's it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.